Hello, it's Matt again, back looking at Synthy V for Sonic Academy, and we're going to look at the rest of the features in the second half of this overview. First up, the nerve center, the, uh, the place where it all happens, the, the pin board, the patch matrix, whatever you want to call it, where you stick your pins in and try and sink your opponent's battleship. I <laughs> jest, of course, for the benefit of people born in the 70s, because there is something rather similar to the old battleship game from the 70s, where you stuck pins in until somebody said, oh, you've sunk my aircraft carrier. That probably won't happen, but if it does for you, brilliant. More likely you'll get a wibbly noise. So this is less like battleships and more like wibbly noise. So it's kind of hard to tell on the graphics here, but on the real thing, you had a bundle of little pins stuck elsewhere on the front of the machine. You took them out from a little kind of place where they were kept stored, and you could stick the little white plastic handle had a pin at the bottom, you stuck the pin, into one of the holes and there you go I've now connected oscillator 2 to the input of ring mod A because as you can see across the top we have a bunch of connections and down the side we have a bunch of connections and so let's do a simple one that you can hear and it's quite easy if I want to hear anything at some point it has to go into one of the inputs to the output channel might sound a bit back to front that but stay with me you have to send things in to the output channel so that it can then go out and be heard okay so to hear something let's send an oscillator let's send some triangle from oscillator 2 oscillator 2 source to output channel 1 there you go now because it's a modular synth i don't need to press a note or run the sequencer i've simply connected as if i'd run a cable from here to there oscillator 2 and it's going to sit there making that noise unless I get rid of it. Okay. Similarly, if I wanted to route the square wave, and just to show this, definitely oscillator 2. Okay, if I move oscillator 2 around. Oh, there's oscillator 1 as well. So, you can connect modules. Down here you've got sources, so you've got like, the oscillators, the noise source, control voltage from the keyboard, control voltage from the sequencer, the output of the filter, the output of the trapezoid envelope shape, sample and hold, the output of the envelope signal, that's the sound passing through this envelope. Remember, it's doing two things at once. It can be an envelope and it can send out a control modulation. We'll cover that deeper again. So you have all these sources here, okay? The ring mod, the reverb, and the stick. Up the top, you have inputs. So you send these sources. In some case, they're a sound. In some case, they're a control modulation. You send these sources to the inputs. The ones marked signal inputs are going to take normally a sound in. The ones marked control inputs are where you can control these modules. So, for example, if we put oscillator 2 back into output 1, if I wanted to sweep oscillator 2 without me doing this, then I could, for example, send oscillator 3, which is on a very, very slow setting, to sweep oscillator 2's frequency. So, I want to go to the control input oscillator frequency for oscillator 2. So oscillator 3, so oscillator 2, and rather handily you can see they're lighting up to show me which ones are being kind of picked, so there we go, oscillator frequency number 2, I'm going to modulate it with oscillator 3's output, and there you go, make it faster. We, of course, will be spending some more time on this later, but that's it. Where you would ordinarily, on a modular synth, run a cable from a module to another, you simply find the point where they cross and meet. So oscillator 2, if I want to send it into the reverb, there we go. And if I want to then hear that reverb, I bring it to reverb to output. And if I turn the wet up, and here it's now. Nice, zappy, springy, wet reverb. Okay, so that's the patch matrix. There's a main volume knob there. I'm not even going to insult your intelligence by suggesting I need to tell you what main volume does. So we'll move down to sequencer. Now, the original VCS3, the, the first EMS product, didn't have a sequencer. But when they repackaged it into a nice little natty suitcase, they thought, well, that whole thing of not putting a keyboard on, whilst incredibly admirable, was a huge pain in the ass. It is quite nice to be able to play a synthesizer as well as just hit and attack and go, ah, good. 
So we have down here, I'll put something back on so we can hear what we're doing. And let's put the keyboard to pitch. So if I wire the keyboard to the frequency of oscillator one and listen to oscillator one, I can play it. Turn it out for now. Okay, so this is a sequencer and a keyboard, so you can play from it. Um, obviously, your own MIDI keyboard is the one you're using more likely, but on the original machine, you played on this conductive strip that picked out which note you were playing by where your finger was pressing. It also can be set to record and playback sequences of various lengths, and you can also spread the, the pitch of both the keyboard and the sequence separately, so you can have like micro tunings going on. This switch here allows you to set whether the envelope shaper is triggered by you playing the keyboard or by sequence notes, and you can randomize settings here. We'll look at this in greater detail. By modern standards, it's a clunky and rather limited sequencer, but it's still got a lot of kind of fun things. If you're trying to emulate original EMS gear, then you're going to want this. Now up here, double arrow, are the areas that Arturia have added to give you a bit of modern take on the synthy. So we've got four sections. They're here. They've got on-off, so we can turn them on or off. They are functions, joystick, modulations, effect. Okay, first up, functions. These are a halfway house between an LFO and a multi-stage envelope, so it can be anything you want it to be as a modulation source. You can send them to numerous destinations, so for example, I might want to control the filter response, something you can't actually do in the original synthy on the patch matrix. And there we go, I now have an envelope generator that controls the filter response. I can now draw points in on this envelope. It can either be a looping envelope as it is currently, or it can be key triggered, and run like an envelope just once when I press a note. See here, each time I press a note, it runs through or I can have it looping like a very complex LFO. And that can be routed in this case to the filter response or any one of the numerous other destinations. There are preset envelope shapes here, so if you don't want to draw one, you can quickly pull some up. And the level and the time are indicated here to show you what you're up to if you need to have some numbers to work with. And the whole thing can be synced to the track tempo. And you have five of these functions, so that's quite a lot of extra modulation sources. And the fact that they can be sync to the track. It's not something you can easily do with the existing synthy features. Next there's joystick. This allows you to set additional destinations. You can do joystick destinations here with stick and connect things, but you can also set further destinations, things such as a resonance that you can't achieve on the matrix. You can use this area, the joystick control, to set the joystick to control filter response, for example, or reverb level, Again, none of these things are on the actual matrix. As well as allowing for that additional control, the joystick section also can be used to draw preset movements of the joystick in the X and Y, which can again either loop or be triggered by a key. Next, we have an additional modulation section which gives us a dedicated LFO that again can be synced to the track, and a step sequencer that again can be synced to the track. So we've now got these additional, as well as the five function generators, the joystick control, we've also got an additional LFO and a step sequencer. And then this patch matrix here, the sequencer for example, can be sent to oscillate the frequency, but again, send it where you like. So I can step sequence the noise color, should I choose. And finally, we have effects. One, two, three digital effects boxes, a number of multi-effects available, and they can be set up in parallel or in series. And that is the Synth TV. I'm out of breath. You need another tea. Let's come back here in five minutes and see what each of these bits can do. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.